And here we go. <clears throat> this is Flash at In a Perfect World on the uh, 25th of August, 2020. Trying to make it through on the RLM chat to see if I hit the live button correctly tonight. It's my evening time out here in DMARC. Anyway, Miss Mary is away on official business with her uh, mom. So I'm going to do a, a quick hour here, I suppose. Let's see if I made it live. I think I did. Maybe not. It's hard to tell. Uh, anyway, in case I did, we got Grimner to thank for all this radio jazz we do here. I know what I'll do. I'll do this. And see what it brings up on the chat. Well, there you go. It says I'm live on the RLN. So uh, we've got for your bots and bodies this evening, we got Barman and Beetle. Well, Beetle's at work. He didn't log off, I suppose. Grimner, Moose Girl, Kate, <clears throat> and I got a froggy throat. Should have cleared it before I got on here. <laughs> Mm, Kate, Anti, Asmo, Chalcedony, Chloe, Dan Van Meter, Me, Frumpy Work, Chase Nines, Chase, Meister Brow, Prince, Rob Works, Trust No One, Uff, Vanna White, Weather Dork, Phantom, CC66, Circolo, hello, honey, uh, Chloe again, Cyborg Noodle, Ensiv, Frumpy, Matt WJ, 2002, Pone Sauce, The Holiest Roger in Z-Pix. So, I don't even know if anybody's chatting tonight, today. We've got uh, just the end of summertime, so I suppose if you can be outside right now. <laughs> Guess what you're not doing. You're probably not sitting here listening to the radio. But what's going on in the world? Uh, I called tonight's show. Hey, uh, there you are. Uh, somebody heard my wonderful freaking voice out there in Radio Land, and today I named the show Two Idiots, Only One Seat." <laughs> Little sarcastic tone, I suppose. But uh, I don't know. There's supposed to be an election coming that's going to change the world. And that's of course. What they told us when they traded Obama for Trump is <laughs> it was going to change everything and everybody was going to be better and have a wonderful old time. I think they bullshitted through that one. It doesn't seem to me that everybody's a happy camper right now. Oh, where'd you go, Grimner? Grimner lost track of time, and I'm actually on time. It's been, August has not been good to me for uh, keeping my commitments. And uh, other people, Larry and Rob and myself do a thing on Thursday. But it's been interrupted with stuff. People have lives beyond, you know, trying to teach you shit on the radio or telling you what they think about stuff or whatever we do. I think a Larry and Rob, the thing I do with them, that's more like a learning thing. You can learn shit. I learn shit up there every week. So hopefully Larry will be back in line with us and we can continue the Dropping a Coil podcast. But in the meantime, I guess I could complain for a quick hour or... Uh, I don't know, maybe think of some new way to approach life that nobody else has thought of before, like, hmm, maybe if I joined all of the religions all at one time, huh? And I could just tell the people in charge of the religions, it's for insurance purposes, to protect me from the COVID. <laughs> I'm going to use, I'm going to use all the available gods of <laughs> <laughs> and a few other things that you church people don't want to hear about. But, <laughs> oh, yeah, yeah. It, well, we're living in this ridiculous time. Whoa. I lost my mind, so I was looking for wire. I might have left it, says Grimner. Well, that's all right. 
you're in good company in this planet. I don't think too many people spend a lot of time thinking. <laughs> thinking is the last resort. Because when you think, well, when I think, it seems to me I don't get the same response that other people get. I hear something, and they hear something different, like with the mask thing. <laughs> yeah, for for your amusement, my wife even posted a pic on the RLM wire for you to make fun of her wearing her stupid mask to her, you know, necessary employment. <laughs> there you go. She is a, what do you call that? Um, what's the word? For that? I already lost the word. Essential. There you go. I thought of it at the end. Essential worker. I'm not an essential worker. Uh, and Grim, pe people overrate finding their minds anyways. And the ones that brag the most have the least to say. <laughs> That's my experience. Because, I mean, I'm sure there are those of you out there who hear selectively or occasionally. And I've made it a point a few times in the past to mention the shit that I think, I don't know if I know it, but I think it, and I got lots of opinions. And I think my opinion is about as worthless as yours is, because I don't care what yours is. I only care what mine is. <laughs> so I figure you're like that, too. <clears throat> Why would you live your life and all you think about is my opinion? Ooh, I must be special. I'd be moving up in the world. <clears throat> Have you tried listening from here? Oh, he's talking to us. Hmm. Because when you have those technical issues and things ain't working right, chat rooms are the best place to go to get sorted out because that's where all the chat geeks are. And these people know their shit. You know, they get around on the internet fine. Taught me a thing or two. Anyway, so what have we got going on? Yeah, I'm going to join all of the religions so that I could be completely and totally safe from the COVID. And maybe I'll get a like a kickback or something off my insurance per companies for it. Could be a financial slash religious side to this COVID thing. I don't think I've thought this out clearly. There's probably a lot of tax benefits in it too. Hmm. But ain't no way you're getting a mask on me. I'll stay home before I ever go out in the fucking street wearing something over my mouth because I'm told to. That would be the complete failure of society that I live in, as far as I'm concerned. And I didn't want to travel anywhere in any fucking way. I already been all over where I wanted to go. So I'm not missing out on anything. And especially with a population of <clears throat> compliant people that don't want to rock the boat. Because, well, they don't want to do that. I tend to look at rocking the bolt as a responsibility. My wife, <laughs> not so much these days. I'm getting older. She's getting a little bit, well, I shouldn't say that about her. <laughs> she's still young. But she's starting to you know, value things. And there's certain things in society, whether you value them or not, complying with them is for the good of everybody and this is one of those times where I don't think so. I think wearing a mask is stupid, undignified, and kind of repulses me to see people in them in the first place. Because you can't see a face. I don't know who you are. You're wearing a fucking thing over your freaking identifier, you moron. And then, how are you supposed to talk to people with this goddamn piece of paper shoved in your fucking mouth? I, uh, for one, am, well, I guess I've made it clear over the time that I've done radio. Hey, this is the hoax of my, in all my life, I've never seen anything organized and executed as well as the coronavirus hoax of 2020. Well, 1920. Uh, slash 20, you know, both years, because they started this shit. 
while ago. In fact, they started it probably about 30, 40 years ago. And through the wonders of modern technology, they've just been shoving a little bit of it up our ass a little at a time. So while the ass reaming is in process, you really don't even notice it. It's like, hey, what did I sit on something? Oh, oh, that's just the government. Nothing, nothing going on here. Go back to TV. <laughs> Go watch some more movies about, you know, how society is going to collapse and we're going to all live in an apocalyptic nightmare, scavenging the wasteland. Trying to survive the hordes of zombies. What? And, and it's really happening, too. I think, well, I've come to this decision, right? Either the COVID is a fraud or there are no riots. Because according to the rules of all this last eight or ten months, both cannot exist. They cannot coexist in a society. Yet, here we are. <laughs> Your society doesn't have it, but their society got it. Whoa. And I know they got whistleblowers coming out, telling people the truth and all this horse shit, but so what? Now, what fucking difference does it make now? It doesn't matter. If tomorrow morning the Trump went on the freaking news and told everybody this all was a big scam, nothing would change. Nobody would be held accountable, as usual, and the worst of the worst will be rewarded financially for us taking an ass whipping, like we always do. That's we, the public. <laughs> and, oh, man, I trade my public suit in any time. I'm done with public. Public does not, um, does not make me smile as it once did when I was young. Now... I don't know. I think now I just shake my head a lot, wondering how the fuck did a, an organization that people call government get so strong and powerful and up your ass that it runs every freaking detail of your damn life, you know? They tell you what you can eat, they tell you what you can drink, what you can smoke, what you can inject, what every fucking, th I think they got tele, uh, what, they got cameras and all the uh, appliances now. <laughs> Watching you bop your wife in the kitchen there, sport, pretty good. I'll give you a 93. <laughs> but uh, we we didn't know that because, well... People don't believe the truth. They believe all the stupid shit. But whatever the fuck is wrong with us, it, it's universal. Hmm. They've got a whole goddamn planet full of people screaming at each other and violent, getting violent over mask wearing. <laughs> mask wearing, COVID, rioting, rioting, protesting. Ah, let's go into that for a minute. Hmm. I think that if I protest to my wife and go, hey, I don't like this, blah, blah, blah. Don't ever do this, blah, blah, blah. And she says, well, tough shit. You asked me not to, and well, I'm gonna. So now what? <laughs> That's what protesting is to me. So, the pirate in me says, arg, matey. Huh. Beg not. <laughs> so I, I avoid it. I think I, I don't feel like I'm a beggar, you know, in, in the society where I want rights and I want privileges and I want and I want and I want. Maybe I do. I, I don't know how the uh, outside people see me. I just know how I see them. And right now my beef is the ones with the masks. My wife. Ugh, made me so mad. Poor Cirque. But, her her honest answer was, you know, at this point, why start shit? You know, why be out there in, in the mess, creating a bigger mess when all I'm trying to do is just go to work? And I, see, I can see it, and I can understand it, but I don't know if I could do it. <laughs> Stand on a chair. <laughs> oh, uh, 
is being a funny guy telling short jokes on the <laughs> In a Perfect World podcast while I'm live tonight. Here he's chatting at me. Hmm. I don't know. Standing on a chair, screaming off the rooftop, uh, all that stuff you know, that we think we do. It doesn't really matter. I don't think the stuff that Trump does matters, or Pelosi, or any of these fucking high-profile politician names. They're just somebody to blame for when shit goes wrong. <laughs> and I cannot figure out anywhere in the history where anything ever went anywhere but wrong. Which led me to say, hmm, there seems to be a pattern afoot. Let's follow it and see where it goes. And when you find out where that pattern goes to, well, once I got over the shock of reading the most horrible things about people, what they do to us legally, how they get away with it, uh, and like implied consent. There's a beautiful set of words right there. They use the system, the system I live in, the system I came from, all the systems use something that they call implied consent. So what does that mean? And some people will take that as it means that if you don't protest, remember, protest, beg, well, then your voice won't be heard. Hmm. But, on the other hand, when you beg, you're just asking the master to give you another bit of rope. You're going to get the rope. <laughs> it ain't going to be where you want it. Or it won't be as long as you need it. Or something will be amiss. Let's just say that. Society has never worked. It's never worked for anybody. Except for, uh, what? Who? The bankers? Time after freaking time after time. Oh, then we go to that religious crap. And then you go, well, yeah, but... The Jews, the bankers are all, yeah, because their religion allows them to fuck everybody um, through finance. And other religions don't allow it. So what the other religions, except I think the Arabs don't use it, uh, we borrow it. Well, me. Huh. <sighs> you know, as a sitting on the fence member of the Jewish religion, because they put me in it, I don't really support it, I don't like it, I don't care. But yeah, usury, that's a Jewish thing. And uh, the Arabs don't, they, they charge a fee for their banking, but it's not what, what the Jews do. It's, it's reasonable. You can actually pay off a fucking debt, but when you use usury, then you add fractional reserve banking practices to that. Well, at the end, you come out with what we have today, which is the hoax of a virus to control people because the while they're changing over the, to this uh, card system, probably some kind of digital system, the people that already have money don't use paper any fucking way. Uh, fiat currency is a poor man's tool. It's not for a wealthy man to bother with. What would he need it for? I'm going to buy a house. Bring in the truckload of dollar bills. Why? When he could just push a button on a little thing in his hand and the transaction is all electronic. So, hmm. See, so in the long run, you know, being poor as I am, I, lo I look at those people and I think, wow, they're slaves. They can't do shit without that magic box. Of course, I can't do anything because I don't have a magic box to do it with. But I already know what that's like when he finds out what that's like. Ooh, <laughs> life will simplify for many. That's what I think. But in the meantime, we've got all these fights going on about freedom and who owes what race, what reparations for which horrible shit their people did four, five, six hundred years ago. It's just like this uh, Bible shit with the Jews. I mean, crying out loud. Wish I would have thought of it. Write a book, make yourself the poor, pitiful, wretch of the world that everybody just keeps pushing out. But we're God's chosen people. <laughs> so, 
Wow. So to to be convinced of all this wordplay. I wish Mary was here. She knows all these words. But uh, to be, I don't know, blinded by the light, maybe, is one way to put it in a modern term that might transfer across the airwaves to my hardcore 30, 35. <laughs> uh, hmm. Don't really have much of a show without a partner for some reason. It's just weird to sit here and talk to myself about the things that I think already. But I'll try to continue in my quest for entertainment. Because, well, I guess I look at what's going on in society right now in the English-speaking world that I'm from is uh, abuse. They are abusing everybody by terrifying the weakest minded and the physically uh, uh, inept. What's the right word to put to it? Hmm. Because, you know, some people are crippled. They've got wheelchairs to live with and, you know, uh, arms that don't work, legs that don't st stuff like that. And these people are the ones that I think they're picking off. Okay, feeble. That's it's such a it, it's a rude topic, Rob. I didn't know where to go with it, but yeah, you know I'm pretty fortunate to be in staying active. I got a birthday coming up in a few weeks, four weeks, and uh, I don't know. I don't feel feeble. I might look feeble. <laughs> I've got a brain that does. I've been accused of all that too. The brains that don't work. Being too short, my hair is too long, uh, I don't speak Danish, you name it, man, and I've heard it. But it doesn't really change me, it just gives me something to make jokes about on the radio, because I think it's kind of funny. Well, the reality of life is so different than the, the uh, internet tells you it is. You know, the, according to the internet, over the last what, 10 years I've been using, 15, something like that. But heavily since about 11. Okay. And uh, what I think I've learned is everything shitty is always happening somewhere else. And no matter, uh, no matter how far away you go from it, it is still there. You know, it, the words don't change. Uh, America's still invading foreign countries. Look at the crap Australia and Canada are going through because of this free... And England, this COVID nonsense. Well, the UK. You know, I've been watching... <laughs> I've been watching Deke Jackson. And he's been doing uh, live streams from his van on the road to rural uh, Scotland. And then he just went down into England. And the English don't like the Scots. The Scots don't like the English. And da 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 And everybody's separated. And they have a word. You're this and I'm that. And... Just like America. <laughs> so, all this united, you know, United Kingdom bullshit. Why? So, people continue to live in this duality, monarchy, freaking political, religious, I'm super educated bullshit that we got going on. <laughs> you know, I'll tell you, if Larry's taught me anything... It's that everything that we've been raised to believe to be good is bad. And the things that are bad for us are forced on us in the name of they're good for you. So, hmm. And I'm still here. They haven't taken me out yet. So I would assume there's no, there's no force out there in, in, that's in my reality that's trying to take me out. But it's available to me. I could eat shitty food on purpose, you know, go to the McDonald's and all that kind of stuff and do all that shit, drink lots of sodas. And the other side of it, I drink a lot of coffee, drink a lot of tea, have a little, well, a couple of days a week, have a few beers. But uh, some of this stuff, no matter what, it's what you put in you is what you're going to get out of you. <laughs> I represent that scent Donna says about smells like weeds. The smell of weed, well, I don't know. 
what are we going to do? I mean, we've got this uh, situation with politics, and the political people are they're making uh, a medical issue political to split people into groups. Well, it's just common sense to me that if there was a pandemic and it was making me sick, I would be going to them, begging them to help me. I wouldn't be forced to get help for something that I apparently, I, nothing looks like anything's wrong. But let's give you a test to see if it's not hidden deep within you somewhere. Wait a minute, that's not how fucking deadly pandemics work, but nuggets. A deadly pandemic would have left a fucking wake of dead for, you know, eight months now, ten months, huge. The way they were talking, they were explaining it as though that's what was going on, but that's not true either. They were just juggling numbers, telling stories. What they're good at, I mean, crying out loud, NASA's been in business for a long fucking time and never done anything. Take a lot of credit for this, that, oh, we went to the moon, oh, we're going to Mars, oh, shit, I'm going to Wyoming, North Dakota, <laughs> some place that looks like Mars, or could look like Mars. Christ, everything they show us is a picture of something. What There's not much real to see, I guess. Or maybe we're all looking at it differently. <laughs> it's quite the paradox when I think about it. Anyway, oh crap, what have we got here? I'll look for something else to... Uh... Oh, I've got a new slogan for everybody. My new slogan is, No Lives Matter. Nobody. It's not one. Think about it. Who's Unless it's somebody that you know... Then why do? Why would you care? I don't care. So I've decided I'm going to start the No Lives Matter movement and become afraid and dependent on government to support all my needs and wants. That way I could be equal to other people. No, well, that was a good rant, but no, nah, I don't think I'm going to do that. But it sounded kind of fun, didn't it? I don't know. I don't really have a show tonight. Uh, what about, I mean, what can I possibly say that I haven't said 500,000 times before? I, I, I. Okay, I'm stalling because I'm looking for something interesting through my notes. Well, I did have plans of doing a more serious show someday. Maybe I'll do it next week. But uh, I'll put together a show with what I thought were... The most important links that I saw that convinced me that, wow, there's way more to this than I could have ever imagined. Because at one point I thought, well, it's all fucked up. And that's as far as I went with it. <laughs> what do I really think? Well, I thought meeting my straw man was quite the, uh, was quite the thing. I, I never seen that before. And when I first saw it, I'm like, wow, what in the fuck is a straw man? And that first thing, of course, I thought of is uh, Wizard of Oz. And then, of course, as you open these links and you learn these new ideas from different angles, hmm, you finally realize that there is a straw man. <laughs> and if you accept that and participate in it, I believe that the results are of your own making. But if you go into it blindly and you have no idea what's going on, you believe, oh, this is the state and this is how things operate and all that crap that they bullshit you with going through life, then you come to be a grown-up one day and you find, hey, wait a minute, this isn't what they told me. What's that gold fringe on the flag about anyway? Ha, ha, ha. So that led me to... Uh, hmm. Where'd I go after? I think the story of your enslavement was pretty good. So what I'm going to do is make notes of the links, but I'm not going to post any of the links. I'll save that for a different a different show where I have it more together. This is just like a, an hour of whatever's cooking in the 
dark recesses of my twisted little mind. And uh, <laughs> my wife's already panicking. But yeah, the story of your enslavement. It's a Stephen. What's how do you say that guy's name? Moulinex. Moulinex. It wouldn't be X. He's French or something. He's a bald guy. He does videos. Molyneux. Okay, so he does this video because the story of your enslavement. And just the title of it, it's like, hey, wait a minute, who the fuck you calling a slave here? But I watched it, and I saw how it was explained to me from very basic point of view, from the very beginning that we can account for, so to speak, to the present day. And I thought, wow, I wonder what other kind of shit's going on. Okay, then I, and this is in any particular order from this part out, but... What comes next to mind is fractional reserve banking. Ha, ha, ha. Because you live in a, a world where you have a job or a career, and you go out and you work, and then you want to go buy yourself a home and all these nice, wonderful things. But what we're not taught about in school is how the banking practices actually operate. When you find out, if you already know, this is just boring drivel probably, but if you uh, if you truly don't know how banking operates, it's they've got it down to where they can explain it to you in a minute, just enough to get your attention to go look and see more information about it. So it's a it's an interesting problem. Oh, here's another beauty force: the cops have no duty to protect the citizen, according to the SCOTUS. So I say police to be uh, verbally correct, have no duty, folks, at all, to protect the citizen. Well, I wonder why. I wonder what that really means. Because legalese is uh, it's like, a, like a, another language, like a secret language. So I'm stalling while I write this, to protect the citizen crap. But some people either don't believe the links are real, or they don't look at them. Either way, they insist on answers that they don't want in chat rooms. People do this all the time. And Rob Works is bubbling on about, ow, oh, I try not to watch demons. Wow. Well, good luck with that. If you've got a TV set, 98% chance you watched a demon. And it's getting worse too. Oh, I'm I'm telling I, what is it? Uh, I was reading about not telling anybody anything, but I'm going to tell you. So Netflix has just gone to shit over since we last few years. So we've used it, and uh, they're putting out some new crap about little girls and that just the idea of if that attracts you to watch it for any reason. I hope you're a child. <laughs> it's 11-year-old kids. So I'm thinking of just scrapping the whole Netflix thing and just getting off it because we're not using it very often anymore. I haven't bothered with it probably once in the last four or five months. The riots and the corona have had my attention. Well, anyway, I don't think so. I, I – what – Moose, what I'm saying I don't think so, is Moose says, this is fucking insane. Well, maybe maybe it's not. Maybe we think it's insane, yet the people that are participating in it, they think we're insane for not appreciating their perversion. You know, because <laughs> I'm imagining if I was a pervert, that's the kind of pervert I'd be. I'd be an all-inclusive pervert. And I'd want you to appreciate my perversion. Why can you not see the beauty of this mango? <laughs> Pulled off the tree already and everything. Going to slice it up and, well, have my way. <laughs> but, see, I mean, okay, so, it, yeah, it, it's probably insane. I was trying to make light of a very horrible situation right now because... Well, we're so distracted with all the negative. 
it's getting really difficult to just uh, be happy like the dog, you know? Damn, the dog just wags her freaking tail at me for no fucking reason at all. I don't give her a treat. I didn't pet her. I didn't do nothing. She just looks at me and goes, wag, wag, wag. Then we play this game, Tug of War. And she's gotten stronger and older, so she's way better at it now, and I'm getting worse, so I don't want to play. <laughs> but uh, the dog is, I don't know, I guess a reflection of me in some way or another. Hmm. Uh-oh. Somebody's having computable computer issues on the RLM screen, main feed chat. Oh, yeah, nobody wants to watch movies on a 19-inch monitor. Well, of course not, but, wow, why not? Wow, greedy, you guys, see, I don't have very good eyesight, so I just appreciate any fucking machine that I can see. <laughs> I, I'm not all that damn fussy, because my eyes could probably go any time. At least I've got the glasses. Without the glasses, I I gotta put my face up to the screen to read the text. It, it's just miserable. So, ooh, his a smaller monitor is a twenty-two inch, a very American and a very long, and very big, very long, very big American twenty-two inch. Ooh. Wow. So this is where we're at, huh? We've got big monitors, people, so that you can read shit. Okay, where was I? Oh, yeah, here's another one. The Act of 1871 explains the political mess we're in. But yet, they still go out and pretend there's a political mess to fix. There isn't one. We're just living in a collective lie. <laughs> How do you explain that to people in a way that would make sense to them? I I don't have any clue on how to do it. I know I try to do it. Whoops, can't type worth this shit, though. Uh, I try to make sense of this shit to other people. What was it, 1876? Let me look. 71, I told you the wrong year. But see, I'll get it straight in the notes. So at least my notes won't be too bad tonight. Just a little bad. Um, let's see, what else have we got going on? Oh, here's another beautiful one. Rockefeller Medicine. Uh, all these institutions and groups of wonderful people who have over the a lifetime amassed fortunes and destroyed just about everybody in their path on the way. This is one of the best stories there is. John D. Rockefeller, snake oil salesman extraordinaire. Couldn't do a better job if I tried. The guy was excellent. And what they did is they owned all the medical institutions where people go to learn how to practice medicine. And along with owning the institutions, they <clears throat> corrupted the law so that only certain types of medicine can be legally prescribed by your state licensed physician. See? So, in the out long run, instead of you going to somebody that's going to save you, you're going to somebody that's making money off your illness. Hmm. And the lesson I learned with that is, <clears throat> outside of some kind of surgical trauma, those monkeys can stay way the fuck down over there, because I ain't going near them. And the way they're handling this COVID crap is, that's probably the best reason to avoid them altogether. Jeez. Nobody tells the truth in a fashion that is appealing. It's fighting and and exposing. No, that's that's not how you change people's minds, I don't think. I wonder what would it take if I was to be a believer of this mask nonsense, this hysteria, what would it take to convince me that I was wrong? 
well, hmm, maybe I'm not really in a mental position to, to do that. So I'm just being, you know, just talking on the radio about it. But, but people are going to have more serious problems coming out of this than they did going into it. That's for sure. I blame the problems on the uh, the solutions that the governments have been promoting as mandatory or hmm, for your best interest or any shit like that. It all seems like a, like a torture to me. Hey, let's lock everybody up, not let them go anywhere. We'll kill off all their small affordable businesses. We'll make them all shop at Walmart and buy the shit with, that they don't want because that's what's available. But we'll call it freedom. Hmm. I hope that doesn't go over a second time here, because they, they bought it here the first time, shut down the bar two months. I was pissed. Ooh, I was a hot little pissed off guy. Hmm. But now that it's open, I'm happy again. See? Doesn't mean I want to live in the place. It just enjoy the anarchy, huh, Rob? Wow. Anarchy, in my opinion, is not what is happening. What is happening is their definition of anarchy, the true definition of the word. I'm lazy, man. I'm going to sit here on my butt, complain on the radio, and I'm going to not do whatever the fuck I am told to do that I don't want to do. Because if I don't want to do it, I don't, I don't see a benefit in what? Who, who the hell is anybody to tell me what to do in the first place? So, I'll always have that shitty kind of attitude. I must be American. But, uh, now, if everybody else is going to do it, the only choice I'll have at that point is to just stay away from them. And guess what time of year's coming right around the corner? Tomorrow, well, tomorrow. It's going to be September in a few more days. Mm-hmm. That's the end of summer where we live, I'm telling you. Then what? Then we got all that cold till spring. So I guess uh, I'm okay with whatever they do. I just do like my walks. And, and the worst thing that will happen is uh, we'll just have to have stuff delivered and I'll just have to walk just for the sake of walking with no uh, end result in line except for... Oh, I took my stroll. Now, I'm prepared for the worst, but that does not mean I will, will you know, all and won't like it. Now, I don't know, oh, but I married a Dane, so you know whatever the whatever keeps the peace around here will be more important than me getting my way. But I refuse to put my health at risk, covering my freaking mouth like some kind of lunatic when I need it to breathe. When I walk, it's not going to happen. <laughs> so I've spoken, and everybody else has said, Shut the fuck up. We heard you. I don't know. I've really got a, uh, so little to complain about. <laughs> I guess the, the mask thing has brought the Jew to the top, you know. I get to be a Jew, Jewy Jew for a day and dribble all over you. But anyway, to uh, continue on Rockefeller Medicine, we also have institutes like NASA going to the moon. I mean, my uh, Cirque's nephew, when he was 12, was visiting us one weekend, and he was mocking, uh, oh, and we're, we're American, we went to the moon, ha, 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 ha. He knew that it was a fraud. He was telling me that it's a, it was a fraud. So, <laughs> I mean, I'm in good company over here for the most part. It just, uh, when the good of society is the topic in the society, then people that don't have um, faith in their own judgment, they tend to follow somebody else they trust. I do it with the computer with Grimner. I don't understand the computer so well. He seems to 
I trust Grimm to get on my machine and poke around and do all kinds of shit. I don't understand what he's doing. But, he runs a site, so he's got to know something. I mean, it, was, it wasn't a big challenge that, that the mask is. The mask is so personal to me. It's like uh, silencing. You know, wow, nobody has... Nobody has the right to force anybody to do anything just because they feel like... T- I mean, there's no uh, foundation to this whole hoax. It's all second best news and hearsay and exaggeration and stories and lies and a lot of fucking movies, man. i tell you one thing. I watched enough movies over the last couple of months about viruses to understand why average Joe believes that you can get a virus from somebody else, but ain't going to happen this way. The virus parts, uh, how do I put it? It's just, it's just an exaggeration. I think Bill Gates took the common cold, came up with this scam so that he can push this inoculation shit on us, right? Rebranded the common cold, something different, and explain that it, it got escaped from this laboratory, and oh no, and here we are, and it's everywhere. Right. It, so it got out of this secret laboratory, and then it just started multiplying. You know, kind of like money does, somehow. <laughs> Put some money in a bank, and watch what they do with it. <laughs> it's just amazing. They can turn a what, $100,000 into a million dollars in like 10 seconds or 20? It's incredible. But me, I can't do that. Virus, virus can't do that either, but they've got everybody on the planet convinced that this fucking minuscule little pest is out there multiplying at such a rate it's infecting everybody with it. Okay, maybe it is. And? Oh, look at all the death tolls and all the... No, see, these people are masters at bullshit. And if you're curious of how masterful they are at bullshit, look up any of the things I put up in the notes here. No lives, well, after No Lives Matter, but Meet Your Straw Man, The Story of Your Enslavement, and blah, 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 blah. And these things are, well, they're true. And the truth doesn't seem to make people too happy. They like, uh, what do people like? Death and taxes? (laughs) More, the more morbid, the better, I think. I don't know. I'm taking a guess here. Oh, Grim and Moose is going for some help on the internet site because uh, that's what we do when we fuck up our own stuff we go to go hey can you help me unfuck it up and that's <laughs> and there's always somebody around to help you cowboy tech's good with a computer and Rob works grimmer not me though I just send you to those guys <laughs> or Vinny all right Anyway, and I guess the last point I want to make about anything tonight would be uh, what we allow as a society is all sick. The things that society joins together to uh, ban is things that are good for us, like cannabis maybe. Uh, But they allow chemotherapy without really understanding what people are doing to each other. If they did understand it, they would never allow it. It's brutal. And I'm convinced at this point in life that uh, what we allow each other to go through because we're stupid and we don't know any better, it's not a matter of fault. It's a matter of uh, truth, I think. And we don't get enough truth and when we do get the truth by the time you get it you're old enough to not believe it or young enough to be told it's not true (laughs) 
Um, wow. I'm going to call that what we allow is all sick. There you go. Those are notes for the night. Grimner, I'm going to send that off to you now. And uh, try to fill up the whole hour. I have ten more minutes. <clears throat> Let me see if I've got an interesting concept going through my little pea brain. You know, because, you know, politics, to me, yeah, no problem, Grim. It, to me, politics is like watching a fag flirt with my dad. My father would have been insulted and embarrassed and probably angry and something horrible would have happened. And now you can watch it on TV as a form of entertainment. So, huh, wow, how... See, that what they call enlightening people and what inclusive and all this horse shit is bringing out personal trait out of other people and uh, spending too much time interested in it. <laughs> I don't really care. I care what people shove in my face. That's what I care about. Other people don't seem to be, uh, what do you call it? They don't give a flying shit, and I, I think I used to be that way, but now the, the way they're shoving shit in my face through this, uh, what's it, that Netflix thing I was complaining about, it's just wrong, it's wrong, I don't like it, so the choice I seem to have made was to not use it anymore. And sadly, the things that I do like about the damn th site will go with the shit that I don't instead of just uh, treating it like a, a site, you know, just look at the stuff I like and if you've seen somebody tell you to fuck off enough times give them an Iggy there's no reason to entertain that person it's over, call it a day except for my imaginary friend, the jester who I cannot not play with because well, he's just too fucking fun <laughs> He's like, he's like the Batman, and because I'm joking, man, I don't give a shit. Things I care about, people out there in Radio Land, probably like you guys, are things I can physically engage, and all the rest of this stuff, you know, good, bad, or indifferent. It's just some sick form of entertainment to me, and I don't think I feel good about the quality of the entertainment coming from the uh, motherland. It's definitely gotten worse over the years. Nothing's improved. I can't remember the last time something did improve where I'm from. It's just years and years of complaining and abuse. and The system is just tightening, tightening, tightening. Then they figured out a way to get you guys to all collectively surrender in groups, you know, in mass. And then it split the group, so because you're going to have opposition to anything. So they came up with something that when you oppose it, you look evil and must be destroyed. Oh, tell some jokes. Good Lord. I, don't, I wasn't ready for... Um, Sorry about that. Duh. Yeah, well, tonight wasn't such a good show or not. I didn't feel I didn't feel it was a great accomplishment. But I hope that the um, people that did catch the show, if they're they're curious about the things that you know help the rest of us that already know all this stuff to get to the thought process of in trying to enjoy liberty <laughs> and freedom in a world where. People don't want you to be free or to enjoy liberty. They want you to protect them from you. And that's not what I'm going to spend the rest of my life doing. I'm not going to be out there protecting anybody from anybody. That's not my job. Ha, 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 my job. You know, my responsibility is to me. And, uh... Okay, a Mexican, a Jew, and a short guy walk into a bar. The bartender says, hey, Flash. <laughs> and I said, what'll it be? President Trump and friends? I don't know, a Jew, a short... Oh, he's not a Jew. Is Trump a Jew? He's an honorary Jew, I think. 
And he's got the wavy, faggy hands for it, too. He's so, wow. Four more years of this fucking monkey. I don't know. What could be worse, Trump or, or uh, the other idiot, Biden? Would it change? I don't see how anything would change. The banking might change. Oh, he's Scottish and German. <clears throat> sure he is. <laughs> I even saw a thing that was They said they they can't even prove that the Drumpf name exists. See, you get, I don't know. All sides to the story, no matter what side you're on, you'll find the side that backs your side. So, I resign to the idea that it's all bullshit. I don't fucking care. <laughs> now, uh, doesn't mean I'm going to go arm up and take out 9,000 people because I'm in a bad mood. I just don't care. And it's It's not... Not a negative, it's more like a positive, I don't care. <laughs> it's for the better of other people that I don't um, stop them at my every whim and tell them what I think is fucked up about them. <laughs> that would be a drag, so I don't do it. I well, do quite the opposite. I appreciate the people that go out of their way to speak English to me because I know and they know how Danish is fucking tough, man. It's a it's a hard one. And with that, we're going to say thanks to the RLM chatters that played along with me tonight from my In a Perfect World podcast. Because if the, if the world's not perfect, I must be living wrong. <laughs> but that's not the popular belief. So... I don't know. I would just go with my whims and uh, my belief system. Try to keep my paws off other people except my wife. And so far, so good. You know? I'm still here surviving this pandemic crisis. Oh, hey, uh, thanks for showing up. <laughs> I need some theme music. Oh, man, that's what I need is more more buttons to push. You, you weren't here in the beginning when I couldn't record a show without fucking something up. It was terrible. It took me a long time to uh, adjust or acclimate or something to get to the point where I could do this alone. And not even cheat. I have to use Windows over Linux because Windows is idiot proof. And I prove that every time I get on here without having to get Grim to bail me out of some technical shit I got into. Anyway, and with that, I think Grim is coming back next week, next Monday. On uh, uh, it's all connected. I'm not positive, but I believe so. And Thursday, I think Larry and Rob are doing a show, and if they are, I'm joining them. And outside of that, there is a, a, a schedule page. If you go to the reallibertymedia.com and open up the main site. Grim has made it nav just easy to navigate. It's easy. I can do it. So if I can do it, I can recommend other people. Okay, yeah. He says he's coming back next Monday at an earlier time. Oh, that's right. I was watching that when you guys were talking about it. And <laughs> I don't know. I don't know. But yeah, okay. So Grim's going to be doing a... Doing a, Is it just a one-time thing, or are you guys going to do a weekly, or what? Because I don't know. I haven't talked to her about it yet. But I talk to her all the time, so I'm sure she doesn't want to do radio with me. Oh, regular show. Well, that'll be interesting. Wish you two the best. Uh, hope you enjoy yourself and such. And I'm, I'm going to over and out right here, looking for all the right buttons to push. And I'm closing up Mr. Perfect World. All right. Thanks, everybody. Roger Wilco, over and out.